All right, then, if you have your Bibles with you, and ask to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 6, and if my memory serves me correctly, it's not been that long since I've preached uh, in this section of Scripture, but as I was studying, the Lord just wouldn't let me trace away from it, so we'll find Him to be faithful, as He always is, and we'll preach it for His glory. Gospel of John chapter 6, beginning in verse 35. John chapter 6, in verse 35, the Bible says, And Jesus said unto them, and those, the people that made up the them, were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and his own disciples. And, the, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall, have, shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come, un shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of you which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And the Jews murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread of which came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? And Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that is here tonight. Lord, we know that they came uh, by divine appointment and not just because we wanted to. God, we thank you for your blessed word that lays before us the entire counsel of God in our own language. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory for that. God, we pray that you would bless your words to the hearts of those that hear, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture, and each of the Gospels put their own uh, emphasis on different things, but I believe the Gospel of John comes as near as presenting Christ as God in the flesh as any of the rest of them do. If you follow the text of Matthew, often he is presented as a servant and being humble and, and being used in that way. And here we find him really revealing himself for exactly who he is and why he came. Now, going back to verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Now, that is a distinction, and if you follow the life of the Jew, uh, they were always caught up about finances and money and where is this coming from and where is that coming from. And, and we feel, uh, and we find the, the real nature of the flesh. Remember they said, would to God we set by the flesh pots in Egypt yeah. and to come out here and die in this wilderness. See, they were, uh, they were a people that did not depend on God. Now, before you get riled up about that, listen, we don't depend on him any better. Uh, you know what? If you're depending on the government, uh, you're depending on the wrong thing. Uh, you know, I doubt, I would dare say maybe one or two, one maybe two in the building tonight uh, don't don't get their paycheck from electronic deposit. You know what? I never see the money that I make. Uh, after I get it, Donna spends it. Uh, uh, but we... Uh, we are in that system, and one flip of the switch, and you don't get no money. That's right. And, and, and so we find then, uh, 
Why are you so confident in that system? Uh, because, listen, you know what? The Bible never teaches us that we'll always be fed in a physical sense, but we'll always be fed spiritually. And so when he made this promise, I am the bread of life, he was talking about nurturing the soul, not nurturing the man. I've literally read uh, stories uh, of martyrs of old that literally starved to death. You know, uh, I don't know much about starving to death, as you can tell by looking at me, but I know it's a painful death from what I've read about. And you know what? I believe I'd rather be knocked in the head and die for Christ that way than to starve. But... We don't get that choice. So when he said, I am that nurturing force, I am the bread of your spiritual life, that's what he was saying. He was identifying himself not only as the nurturer, but also himself as the very Son of God. And so he says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Now I want you to see that People who teach and preach that salvation is insufficient would have to say that this verse is wrong. Because he says, you'll never hunger again. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for this evening, Donna, maybe some, some little cake, pita cakes with some chicken and stuff in them. And, and they, they were really good. I ate that. And, uh, and, uh, but you know what? About, about time to get home, I'll be hungry again. <laughs> The, the pita don't go very far. You see what I'm saying? And after that, if I eat a snack at bedtime, then in the morning I'm going to be hungry again. And by noontime tomorrow, I'll probably be at Zaxby's getting me some more chicken. And on and on it goes. But see, with the Lord Jesus Christ, the inner man never hungers again. That's right. You know what? That sounds like That sounds like eternal security to me. That, that sounds like something that you can depend on. And, and, and so we find then that as the Lord Jesus is teaching them, he says, I am sufficient. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. So you're not going to be hungry. You're not going to be thirsty anymore for spiritual things because he's fulfilled that need. But I said, uh, but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Now, uh, I've never been in a Catholic church. Well, maybe one time when I was a kid, uh, we were all somewhere on a, on a basketball game when I was in elementary school, and there was a Catholic church next door, and one of the boys was Catholic, and he ran in there like a scalded dog. I guess he'd been a while. And, and uh, his name was Paul, and I looked in there because he went in there, and he was doing his deal like this, and there was a, 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 a statue of the Lord Jesus Christ where our mission map is, hung on the cross and looking there still crucified. You know what? He's not there. He, yeah. he, he was poured out for our sins but he rose gloriously right. again. Yeah. And you know what? People who believe that, they believe not. Yeah. Um, if you have salvation and you have a faithful belief in Christ, it's because of him, not because of you. Right. Uh, salvation is not logic. Logic is stuff you learn like mathematics. Mm -hmm. Salvation is more than that. You know what? You know what the problem with saying, honey, will you say this little prayer with me? It's based on logic. Yeah. You know, uh, we're in the South. I've never heard anybody say, man, I'd really like to go to hell, wouldn't you? No. Uh, I mean, we, we've heard of, I don't even remember the first time I heard about hell. So if you're doing that on a that's not on a spiritual level, level. That's a preservation level. Nobody's ever desired hell. But uh, uh, so true salvation isn't based on what this body understands, but rather by the work of the Almighty. And we find here that that is what he's saying. You, you don't believe huh, like you should. Verse 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. You know why I'm interested in starting to work at Paris? Because I, it's promised that it will be faithful. Everybody that the Father has given unto the Lord Jesus Christ, every one of them will come. Everyone will be drawn unto himself. And listen, those that are not drawn are simply not his. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really popular teaching teaching today, is it? You know what? Uh, what I found about begging people to accept the Lord Jesus, whatever that is, they become two more folks a child of hell. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a spiritual work or it's nothing at all, right? It's a work brought by God or it's nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so we find then that it's the Lord Jesus is preaching to this very odd group, mixed multitude of people. What he was really saying is you're following the law is insufficient. Your rules don't cut it. You have no, no heart knowledge of me or the Father. All you have is a set of rules. Yeah. And so... Uh, wasn't taken real well. Notice in verse 38, for I came not, for I came, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which had sent me, that all of those which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up again at the last day. Now if God set Jesus on a mission and did, and Jesus accomplished it, then that means none of the fathers is ever going to be lost. Yeah. They're, they're never, they're never, you know what? We don't have to run around with our hands ringing and begging people to do it because if they're his, they'll come. Right. But with that said, that means, it also means this, we don't give up. Right. Uh, because we have to keep preaching, we have to keep missionaries on the field, we have to keep we have to keep going because listen, we simply don't know who belongs to God. Yeah. Right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna preach to everybody. Sure. I'm gonna preach the gospel and say the Lord Jesus Christ is a savior. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ forgives sin. The Lord Jesus Christ uh Pouring himself out on Calvary is the only payment that works. Is the only payment for sin. Yeah. Trust that. And I'll keep doing that. The Lord be my helper to the day I die. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that which, for everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So my question for you tonight is, have you seen the Son? Now, when you began to think of that, and because of our depravity of the flesh and the, the filth of the Catholic Church, we come down to this. Every time you think of Jesus, you think of a long-haired hippie dealt with the, his hair down to his shoulders. Listen, that is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible was totally different. First of all, I don't believe he ever had long hair. Yeah. If you follow the history of the Bible, Jesus was a Nazarite meaning he was from the city of Nazareth, but he was not a Nazarene. A Nazarene is a priest, and he did make a vow with his hair, but even with that said, when the vow was over, he cut it off and all right on the altar. And uh, so I don't believe he was a long-haired hippie. I, I don't believe, I believe he's probably uh, pretty ugly. According to the Bible, the Bible says he was without form of comeliness. Uh, he, he was an attractive man, as, as, man thinks, uh, as mankind thinks of an attractive man. In fact, he was one to be rejected. That people would say, this can't be the, this can't be the Messiah. And so he had nothing appealing about him. That is the one. And that's why many of the elders and the scribes looked at him mockingly and swagged their heads and said, this certainly cannot be him. But yes, dear friend, it was. Verse 41, the Jews murmured in, at him and said, huh, and, and, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he saith, I came down from heaven? And Jesus therefore answered and said to them, murmur not among yourselves. You know, it's a very ugly thing, and this was just one of a few occasions the Lord knew what was going on. Those little whisperings and saying, did you see what was going on? That happened time. And then in another place, I believe it was in uh, uh, when he went to the rich man's house, he said he knew his thoughts. And so this woman hadn't ceased to kiss my feet. Right. And you give me no water. He, he knew what that man was thinking because the man was thinking this, man, that, that, that girl's a hooker, and, 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 she's let, and he's letting him touch her. 
And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it a disturbing thought to you that Jesus Christ knows our thoughts? It's very disturbing to me. because I, Listen, I know, I know what this junk is made out of. Mm -hmm. And if we'd all be honest, yeah. you'd be right there with me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we find then that the Lord Jesus says, listen, I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're murmuring about. I know what you're, what you're getting at. And then he says this, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Now, in the modern day, that, that is what's left out of salvation. You know, uh, first of all, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I can't even remember the first time I heard this either, the plan of salvation. Who come up with that? Well, I'll tell you, it's the Son of Baptist. I'll tell you exactly who came up with it. But see, this is the thing. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. We need to be very careful when, when we begin to teach and preach things that are not present in Scriptures. And so we get to this one key thing that the plan of salvation leaves out, and that is the drawing of the Holy Ghost. Right. You know what? I can't even tell you how many times I heard Christ preach before one glorious day He saved me and made me new. Now what is the difference there? He drew me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I mean, like I said, I, I have no idea how many times I heard the gospel before he drew me. I've seen very many people grow up in church 20, 30, 40 years, yeah. think that they're okay. And then one day the Father draws them. Yeah. See, that's what you have. That's something you can take to the grave. Mm -hmm. Listen, this little pity pat prayer, and just because you believe all five points, listen, that don't make you redeemed. Right. No. You see what I'm saying? It's the drawing of the Holy Ghost there. And if it's not, dear friend, make your calling and election sure. Seek the Lord while you may be found. Mm -hmm. and, and so we find then that this, this, this type of doctrine did not sit well with these people. Now, if you will go back to the Gospel of John again, chapter 3, very familiar verses of Scripture, but Brother Ken and I have talked about this a number of times. A lot of it is taken out of contextual order when you hear this group of, uh, group of Scriptures preached on, and they run to write to 16. But see, there's a problem with running to 16. you got 1 through 15 to deal with. There you go. And, and, and that, that is the issue with this religious man called Nicodemus. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 3, the first verse, the Bible says this, there was a man of the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees was just a type of Jew that believed in a resurrection, a bodily resurrection of the dead. The Sadducees did not. They thought when you were dead, that was it. Nothing else to worry about. You know what? If I believe that, I'd live like a dog and have some fun, wouldn't you? Because if, if the grave is it, that's it. What, what I got to worry about? But the Pharisees knew there was something more to life. You know, I used to think that was intrinsic. That everybody knew that there was more to than this this short time. But you know what? After 50 plus years, I found that that is not intrinsic. Most people reject that truth. Most people would rather embrace, listen, there's nothing to it. And you know why? Because if there is a life after this one, it makes you accountable. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of a lot of people say, well, if I believed what you did, meaning grace and predestination, if I believed what you did, I wouldn't even worry about it. No, no, dear friend. The Bible says this, that even the heavens proclaim who he is. And that's not the third heaven, the abode of God. You go out there tonight and you look up and see the stars and the moon and the majesty and the beauty that he's put before us. It says there is a God. I, I, I put this place into motion. I am God. Therewith, the Bible says, you are without excuse. Amen. Nothing to say on that grand day, is it? I didn't know you. I didn't understand you. Uh, uh, I don't know what you mean. And so we find then this Pharisee Nicodemus was of that group uh, that believed in a resurrection. And with believing in a resurrection came to believe also of a next life. 
something more than this one. Something after we put you in the bone yard. And, and, and so we find with that, he became interested in Jesus. There was a name of a man. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler, a teacher, a, a, a higher person of the Jews. The same came by. The same came to Jesus by night. Now uh, I've heard a lot of a lot of theologians uh, make different expressions about this, but this is my thing. You know what? When I was a young boy and I was out away from the Lord, you know when I did my drinking at night, so Mama wouldn't know, and, and and nobody else would know because it was an embarrassment to me, and I didn't want nobody to know it. And he came to Jesus by night. Why? He didn't want nobody to know it. He was embarrassed of him. He didn't want nobody to know that he had an interest in this man named Jesus. And you know what? A lot of people like that today, isn't it? They, they don't want anybody to know that they're interested in this, in this wonderful Savior called Jesus. So he went, he went to him at night. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, which just means teacher or master, uh, and it's not like master... I'm your servant, it's master, as though you have a master's degree in nursing or a master's degree in biblical science, something like that. It has nothing to do with respect. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, man, it really sounds good, don't it? You, you know, you ever talk, uh, and, and you know, they didn't realize that I was young at one time too, but when I used to teach, you can tell when your students was buttering you up. Oh, Mr. Lafferty, I wish I knew much about nursing that you do. I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> right. And that, that was Nicodemus' approach. I, I'll just make him feel good. We, we know you're doing a good job. No, we didn't. You, you know... You know what made him, what would make you understand that he came from God? God himself. That, that's the only way you'll ever get it. What, what did when, uh, when he looked at Peter and said, whom did ye say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Blessed are thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So listen, agree to a set of facts. Don't save you. Listen, if it's not revealed by the mercies of God, you will never know it. And that salvation, listen, dear friend, that you can take on to the grave and be very satisfied with, and that's what comes from God, and it does not come from man. And so we find that Nicodemus was bothering Jesus up thought that he had all things under his own hand. And notice what the Lord Jesus says to him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, that hit home with Nicodemus because he didn't realize that the, the, next, the next empire was a spiritual empire, not a literal one. And they were wanting to get out of the thumb of the Roman government and set up their own nation again. And so when you talk about the kingdom to men, listen, their ears perked up. And he says, you won't even be a citizen. You won't be even in this kingdom except one if you're born again. And poor Nicodemus was clueless. Now, I've used this illustration before, and you can think about it tonight when you're there by your beds and nobody else can talk to your see to see you. What did you contribute to your own birth? Nothing. It was the actions of your mother and daddy, and you didn't ask to be born. That's stupid, ain't it? To ask, you know, they'll take these little youngins and try to run through some. Ask Jesus into your heart. Where does that come from? Can you ask to be born? Certainly not. That's foolishness. That, that's putting logic to something that is made of the Spirit. And, and, and so we find <coughs> that Nicodemus didn't get it. And you know why Nicodemus didn't get it? He was lost. 
And you know why you, sometimes you preach your heart out and people just don't get it? You know why? They're lost. That's it. They, the, and you know what? If God don't open them spiritual ears and pull the mud from the spiritual eyes, they'll die right in the same condition they're in. And the next sermon that they go to will be the same situation. And so we find that Nicodemus was marveled. Verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, and that is the natural birth, it is not baptism, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, except a man is, bo is born of water, the amniotic fluid that surrounds the child, except he be born of water and of the Spirit, both births must be present, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Right. Then notice what it says. That which is born of flesh is flesh. A repetition of verse 5. The water birth is the flesh. The spiritual birth is the spirit. Mark, he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit, capital F spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, born of the spirit is spirit, little s, the inward soul of man. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Now, if you don't get anything else tonight, and, and 50 years later from now you don't remember, even we were here, you remember this, you must be born again. Yeah. You get that one etched in your mind, and you keep it there until you're pushing up daisies somewhere, ye must be born again. And listen, dear friend, if you don't have that, you don't have nothing. When you leave here, as surely as my name is Larry, you'll split head, hell wide open if you're not born again. Oh, seek the Lord while you may be found. Amen. Uh, it, it, it's an absolute necessity. It's the, the only thing that this life hinges on. Verse 8. Again, you don't hear many, many Baptists preaching on this one because it kind of cuts us off where we're at. The wind, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Now here's the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit, capital S Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Now, uh, we can't control the wind. And we can't control the working of the Holy Spirit. Now, can we pray for them? Absolutely. I pray for my girls every night when I lay down. But listen, I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not the Holy Spirit. And you know, isn't it amazing sometimes when you're, when you're in, in services and seemingly the Lord is dealing with some people and other people thinking, you know what, I need to, in the morning, I hope I don't forget to clock in. You know why? Because the wind is blowing from some and it's not blowing for others and it goes where it wants to. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit goes where it wants to. And that's why people can sit on the pews of Sovereign Grace Baptist Churches and split hell wide open. It's yeah. because the Spirit goes where it wants. And we, we ought to be appreciative and, and give God the praise. If He saved you, listen, He certainly wasn't obligated to do that. Verse 9. And Nicodemus answered and said unto them, How can these things be? He was totally blown away. He didn't get it. He didn't understand it. <laughs> Notice what the Lord says. And Jesus answered and said unto, them, unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, and we speak, we speak what we do know, and testify that, uh, that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. I have told you of earthly things, and you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No man have ascended up to heaven... But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, yeah. so the Son of Man, so the Son of Man be, must be lifted up. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know that parable, we're fixing to go to one place and we'll close. If you know what he's referring to, to the historic Israel. Um, there was some rebellion in the camp. You remember that? Right. And the Lord God of heaven 
sent vipers, sent poisonous snakes, snakes in among them and bit them and they began to die and to be sick and they were all dying and they they repented and, and God and Moses always an intercessor always going to bat for Israel he went to God and said what do I do and he says make you a golden servant an image like unto what's killed you and place it on a high pole and everybody that looks on him shall be healed right did you ever think there were probably some that didn't yeah, yeah. Moses is such an idiot. Here I am, snake bed, and he's doing something like that. You know what? I bet they died thinking that too, don't you? Yeah. You know, you know who looked the ones with faith. You know the ones that looked the one that didn't necessarily believe Moses, but believed God. Mm -hmm. Those people looked, and they were sustained once again. And so we find then that. The Lord Jesus was lifted up on our behalf. Now, if you will, go with me to John chapter 7. And I will point out while you're turning there, John chapter 7 verse 50 is what we're going to look at next. But while you're turning there, I want to point out what Jesus didn't do. Jesus did not invite Nicodemus to say a sinner's prayer. Jesus did not invite Nicodemus to join the church. Nicodemus, Jesus did not invite Nicodemus to be baptized. He told the truth and left it what it was. You know, that's a very, you have a very, very good pastor and a dear friend in the ministry if he'll just tell you the truth and leave it where it's at. Yep. Not try to coax you, not try to talk you into Absolutely. anything. Just present the truth and leave it right there where it is. And the best we know, that night Nicodemus walked away, slipped away while it was still dark. And that for a while, that's all you hear of him. And then in 7, John 7, verse 50, the Bible says this. Now, they were getting up a band of insurrectionists and they wanted to take Jesus down. And Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, meaning the Pharisees, one of the opposition, Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doeth not our law judge any man before we hear him and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, are thou also who of, uh, of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Now, I want you to see, I still don't believe at this point that Nicodemus was saved. That's just my own opinion. Because I believe he has said a lot more than, listen, uh, our law says that he has to have a trial. And that's all he says. Can you imagine at, at the a discussion Jesus death all you can come up with well he needs a trial well he got one didn't he bunch of hoodwinked paid out witnesses he got a trial but it didn't amount to much did it right. so you know the only conclusion I can come to is probably Nicodemus was still lost because it's the speech of a lost man but on the same token, and you flip that around, listen, when it becomes illegal to preach the name of Christ, where are you going to be at? It comes to illegal to gather together in the name of Jesus, where are you going to be? When, it, when it, that, that blessed book in your lap becomes illegal, what are you going to do with it? See, it's easy to criticize Nicodemus, but you haven't been in Nicodemus' shoes. But we might be. We might be. And so the last place I want to read uh, tonight, chapter 19, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, and verse 38. John 19, verse 38, the Lord Jesus Christ had been crucified and mercilessly beaten. He'd been bled out. He gave up the ghost. Now, I can't preach this without emphasizing, and I know all my home church people know this, 
but I'm going to tell you just so you'll remember. Most people who died on the cross died by asphyxiation. They smothered out because they couldn't do this. And they pull up, get them a good deep breath, and go back down again. And that was, that was asphyxiation. You smothered to death by your own weight, which is pretty merciless. Uh, that was the filthy Romans for you. And then, but Jesus was different. He died by blood loss. Because every drop of his sweet blood had to be shed for a full atonement of those that belonged to his. You read about the atonement in the Bible. It was always for a specific number of people for a specific number of days. It was always. See, if the atonement was general, then Jesus is a failure, right? Right. If, 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 if everybody who accepts Jesus can be saved, then, then listen, all it is is logic and part of the atonement was lost. Is that not right? But every drop of His sweet, precious blood was shed on behalf of me and you and all the redeemed of the earth. And when He says, it is finished, it was because all the blood had been shed. Nothing more. You remember... Uh, he was getting close to, to being dead, and that Roman soldier gag, jobbed that uh, spear in his side and said, Flesh, I said, water and blood ran out. Well, the reason why in crucifixion also blood begins to pool in your lungs, part of the asphyxiation, part of the smother. And see, that blood in his lungs had to come out, had to be used for sacrifice of sin. So... <laughs> You talk about a sovereign God, an ungodly Roman soldier saying, at the right moment, jabbing it in because the hand of God says that blood has to be used to. That is particular redemption at its best. And so we find then that, uh, that after all this event, who shows up? Verse 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, now that is not Joseph, the father of the Lord Jesus Christ, this was another preacher. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave, and he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. Now, I'm not going to get too deeply in this, but listen. <laughs> Good Friday is a, is a Catholic hoax. The Lord Jesus did not die on Friday. Best I can understand is probably a Wednesday. And uh, stayed in the belly of the earth three days and three nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Rose on Sunday, that makes three, right? And uh, so we find this little season that's fixing to come up to celebrate fertility. That's what the rabbits are about. That's what the eggs are about. Run from it. Run from it. It, it has no biblical value. Zero, nothing, not. And run from it. And, and, and so we find then that Joseph of Arimathea begs the body. He's given leave to go get it. He, he, he does his job. And notice who shows up. And there came also Nicodemus, mm -hmm. which at the first came to Jesus by night. And brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Now, that's a lot. That's a lot of. Now, I don't know if that's a hundred pound. Like he brought a hundred pound of this ointment, and it could be, or if it's a hundred pound, like a pound of uh, of um, English money. I don't know which one it is, but either way, it was a very ex expensive endeavor. See, now he was giving of himself. You know what a true sign of being born again is? You're willing to give of yourself. That, 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 that's a, a sign of a redeemed person. And so whatever this amount was, Nicodemus was willing to give it. And then took they, meaning Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, and they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes, with the spices after the manner of Jews to bury. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never a man yet laid. There they laid Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was not at hand. Now, that's the life of Nicodemus. 
Best we know, we don't ever hear from him again. But I believe the genuineness was shown by what Nicodemus did. Yeah. Did we ever, ever in here where Nicodemus said a prayer? Did we ever find in here where somebody led him to the Lord? Whatever that means. No, no. Somewhere he got something real, did he not? Now, there's nothing, nothing wrong with crying out to the Lord. I, I, I cry out to him a whole lot. But there's nothing magical about saying prayers. You know, that's kind of what the idea that uh, he saw that the laying of hands, he, he, he was able to cast out demons. Man, that got that, got that disciple moving. and said, give me I want this, I want this gift. Mm -hmm. So you be careful about that. You need to look within yourself tonight and know if you're saved or lost. Yeah. Has he done a work in your life or not? Nothing else really matters, does it? That's right. Nothing really matters. You spend 106 years in this place and you die without Jesus, you'll go down to the hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, about you? What, what about you? Look about the cross your life. I'm, 52 and some change now. And I can tell you specifically the day the Lord made me something. Now, do I know when it was exactly? No, I know it in June. And I believe the year was 82. I'm trying to think. No, 80. 1980. But what's more important than that is that I know it. Yeah. You know, history can fool you. Him speaking to you cannot. Right. Do you know it? And when it's all said and done, does anything else really matter? Absolutely not. The Bible says this, pearl of a great price. Yeah. Sell yeah. all you have and go after it. Amen. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and that's something that you can depend on when death comes. Amen.